Franklin goes to the hospital. Franklin sometimes had colds and run and tummy aches, and every now and then he got cuts and bruises. He went to the doctors for regular checkups, and once the doctor came to Franklin's house. But until now, Franklin had never been to the hospital. Franklin and his friends were playing soccer. The ball was kicked to Franklin and it hit him hard in the chest. Woof, he groaned, but he kept on playing. That night at bath time, Franklin said, ouch, when he dried his tummy. His mother took a closer look. Hmm, she said, we'll have to go to the doctor first thing tomorrow. With gentle fingers, Dr. Bear poked and prodded Franklin's shell. He discovered a small crack. It isn't serious, Franklin, he said, but I have to put a pin in your shell to help it grow properly. I'll schedule an operation for you tomorrow morning at the hospital. Will it hurt? asked Franklin. We'll give you sleep medicine before the operation so you won't feel a thing, replied Dr. Bear. When you wake up, you'll be a little sore, but we'll keep you in the hospital overnight to make sure that you're okay. Dr. Bear explained that the operations can only be done when a patient has an empty stomach, so told Franklin not to eat or drink after bedtime that night. Franklin didn't mind. His tummy was too busy flip-flopping to think about eating. After school, Franklin's friends came to visit. Franklin showed them about the book about hospitals that Dr. Bear had given him. Fox pointed to a picture and asked why everyone was wearing a mask. Masks keep germs out of the operating room, explained Franklin. Are you scared? asked Beaver. Of course he's not scared, replied Bear. Franklin's very brave. Franklin didn't say anything. It was early when Franklin and his parents left for the hospital. With his blue blanket and with his blue blanket and Sam clutched in his arms, Franklin said goodbye to his room. Franklin's mother gave him a hug. You'll be home tomorrow, she reminded him. I know, said Franklin softly. You're a very brave little turtle, said his father. At the hospital, Franklin was given a bracelet with his name on it. Then, an attendant pushed him down a long hallway in a wheelchair. Franklin stared at all the strange equipment on carts and trolleys, and he wrinkled his nose at unfamiliar smells. As they went around corners and through doors, Franklin kept checking to make sure that his parents were keeping up. At last, they reached Franklin's room. A nurse gave Franklin a special gown to wear. She took his temperature and his blood pressure and listened to his heart. Next, she rubbed some cream on his hand. This will numb your hand, she had told him. Then it won't hurt when the doctor puts in the needle for your sleep medicine. Okay, said Franklin in a small voice. You're a very brave patient, said the nurse. Soon the attendant came back to take Franklin to another room. Dr. Bear was waiting for him. We're going to take some x-rays, she said. I need to know exactly where to put the pin. I don't want x-rays, whispered Franklin. X-rays don't hurt, explained Dr. Bear. The machine only takes pictures of what's inside you. I know, said Franklin. He started to cry. Dr. Bear sat down beside Franklin. Please tell me what's wrong, he said. Franklin sniffled. Everybody thinks I'm brave, but I'm just pretending. X-rays will show that inside I'm scared. Oh, Franklin, explained Dr. Bear, an x-ray doesn't show feelings, it only shows shells and bones. You mean no one will know I'm afraid? asked Franklin. No one, replied Dr. Bear, but just because you're afraid doesn't mean you're not brave. Being brave doesn't means doing what you have to, no matter how scared you feel. Franklin thought for a few moments. Well, I am scared to have the operation, he said finally, but I know I have to so my shell will grow big and strong. Dr. Bear smiled. That's what being brave is is all about. Franklin let out a deep sigh. I'm ready now, he said. When the x-rays were done, Franklin was taken to the waiting room. We aren't allowed in the operating room, Franklin, said his father, but we'll be with you in the recovery room when you wake up, his mother promised. Soon Dr. Bear came to get Franklin. His mother and father kissed him and waved as he went through the door. In the operating room, Franklin said hello to the other doctors and nurses. Dr. Bear put stickers on Franklin's chest and explained that this was how they would watch his breathing and heartbeat during the operation. Then Dr. Raccoon put the needle for the sleep medicine in Franklin's hand. It didn't hurt at all. When that was done, he asked Franklin to count backwards from 100. 
but I can only count backwards from ten, Franklin said. That will be just fine, said Dr. Bear. Ten, nine, eight, began Franklin, and that was as far as he got. Wake up, Franklin, called a far away voice, but Franklin didn't want to wake up. In his dream, he was scoring the winning goal. Wake up now, Franklin, said his mother. Slowly, Franklin opened his eyes. He saw his parents and Dr. Bear, and then he remembered. Well, I haven't finished counting, he said in a wobbly voice. But I've finished operating, said Dr. Bear with a laugh. Two hours later, Franklin was back in his hospital room. He walked slowly to the mirror and looked at his bandages. I guess it'll be a while before I can play soccer again, he sighed. Dr. Bear thinks you'll heal very quickly, said Franklin's father. She also said you're an excellent patient, asked, added his mother. Franklin smiled. That night, after Franklin's parents had gone home, Dr. Bear came to see him. I have something to show you, Franklin, she said. She held up an x-ray. Is that me, he asked. Dr. Bear nodded. Yeah, that's you, she said. Brave through and through.